here. Listen, if there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. Sure. Sure. Uh, every once in a while, you could stop by. See, I haven't stuck my head in the oven or something. Danny, I'm kidding. Don't worry about me. Well, I do. Well, then, light a candle, say a prayer. You know, whatever can't hurt, okay? Now, go on. Yeah, get out of here. Now, if there's anything I can do, remember, okay? Uh -huh. All right. Hey. Yeah. But 
unless they can make something of these footprints they found. Well, that seems like a pretty long shot. Yeah, I, I'm afraid so. You haven't had the locks changed on the door, have you? Oh, it was the first thing I did. It's convinced that whoever it was had a key to the apartment. I'm concerned about you, kiddo. I mean, I, I just don't like the idea of you being alone in that place late at night. You say? Save as Karen is alone at your house. Suppose you are. Listen, I, I, uh, I don't mean to eat and run, but if I don't get home and think up some pertinent questions, then I won't have any good quotes. Yeah. Now listen, don't work too hard tonight, all right? Yeah. You promised me you'll take a taxi, don't yes, you? Yes, right? I Tell me, how was your first 
stay on the new job. Honey, what is it? Just got fired, Mrs. Hopkins. You're joking. No, you're not joking. But the first day? What on earth could you have done that was so bad? The manager said I didn't know the merchandise well enough. Yesterday, I, I asked too many stupid questions, and I, I bothered him and the other salesmen. He said he wanted somebody who was a skier themselves and who could help people find ski equipment. That sort of thing. Well, maybe he was right. Maybe it wasn't exactly the right job for you. But, honey, there's no need to be depressed, is there? Well, it isn't exactly something to celebrate. No, it isn't. Look, you come and sit down. I bet you have been on your feet all day long. Look, here is the evening paper. You and I are going to go through all those help-wanted ads. I bet you that there are a lot of jobs available for a girl like you. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. I have a better idea. You don't have to worry about me, Mrs. Hopkins. I most certainly do, as long as you're under this roof. Now, don't you want to hear my better idea? What is it? Well, if you will help me with dinner, we can get the dishes done by 7.30, and then you and I are going to a symphony concert. We'll worry about the job first thing in the morning. I thought you were going with Mr. Bottomley. He called a few minutes ago. His sciatica is acting up again. Poor darling. But he said that he left the tickets in his name at the box office, and I was supposed to go ahead and use them. Just hate the idea of going alone. So please, Lynn, would you go with me? Yeah. All right, Mr. Jenkins. Why did you bring me here? <laughs> now, how many times I got to tell you my name is Slim? Oh, I can't imagine why. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Touche, Karen. Touche. Of course, I got that nickname when I was about 11 years old. You could count every single rib. Oh, well, what's your real name? W.G. That's how we got the brand and the name of my ranch, see? For my first initial. It's called the Lazy W. Oh, what is W.G. Cash for? Nothing. It's like the S in Harry S. Truman. <laughs> no, no. Did I satisfy your curiosity? Well, some, but I still want to know why you brought me here. Well, it is kind of tacky looking. It's the Outback. They got themselves a barbecue pet. And old Harold, that old uh, boy over there, well, he can fix the meanest barbecue this side of Wood County, Texas. I do declare. Is that a fact? That's a fact, little lady. So why don't you just drink up, huh? And then we'll have some of that barbecue. And then we'll, uh, think of something else to do. Harold, uh, bring uh, me and the lady, uh, two more of these, would you please, sir?
be shorter? Yeah, they always put the heavy stuff up front. Ah, uh, so they can grab you while you're fresh, huh? I guess so. Yeah. Grab, you don't have to stay if you don't want to. No, hey, that's all right. Drag me all the way down here for a little culture. I'm going to stick it out to the bitter end, right? <laughs> hey, Dr. Peter. Well, how are you? Okay, how are you? Hello, Jenny. Hi. Well, I, I didn't know you were both music lovers. Well, I am, but I have a captive audience here. Uh, so you, uh, you came along like a good husband, huh? Yeah, it was my poker night, too. Oh, come on, you liked it. He just won't admit that to you because he won't have anything to complain about. Maybe see something you know? Uh, well, yes and no. Um, see the, the girl with the long dark hair, the blue dress? Yeah. Yeah, well, what about her? Do you know her? No, but I'd like to. Brad. Oh, sorry, I got a jealous wife there. She is very attractive. Yeah, I thought so, too. I, I met her earlier today at the, uh, the mountaintop shop. You know the ski shop? Oh, the plot thickens here. Yeah. Now, uh, it was really kind of strange. You see, she was waiting on me, and we were filling out my order, and I happened to mention that I was a doctor. And all of a sudden, she just turned off. I mean, just stopped and excused herself, went off and waited with some other customers. And she never came back. So, now you got a second chance, right? That's pretty much the way I look at it. Yeah. I think I'll walk over there. Will you uh, go excuse me, please? Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Well, hello, Mrs. Hopkins. Hello, Peter Jets. You enjoy the concert? Yes, very much. Oh. Excuse me. Do uh, you remember me? Peter Jets, we met earlier today at the mountaintop shop. Oh, yes. I'm really glad that I ran into you. I thought maybe I had said something to offend you. I mean, you just disappeared on me. Oh, not at all. I just got involved with some customers. Don't you think we should get back to our seats? All right, of course. I'll see you later. <laughs> Thank you, Al. Mm. So how's the barbecue tonight, good buddy? Only right the best. You know me, Slim. <laughs> That's exactly what I was telling the little lady here. She ain't tasted nothing until she's tasted old Harold's barbecue. <laughs> Okay. Well, what should I start with? 
Good song to bad news or good news first? Why don't you just uh, say what comes to you first? All right, we'll get through the dull things then. The uh, results of our first subscription mail have been very encouraging, particularly in the uh, more desirable demographic groups. Here is a, um, a breakdown and analysis from our circulation people. You might want to digest that so you can brief Dorian out over lunch. I'm having lunch with Dorian? Yes, in the executive dining room at what? I left a note on your desk yesterday, didn't you see it? Here it is. All right, what else? Uh, oh, the price of slick paper stock has gone up again. And production wants to know if you consider a, a cheaper quality paper for the magazine. Not on your life. How are we going to get good four-color art on cheap paper? Well, that's what I told them. But they wanted to go on record as saying that we'd have to pay through our noses. <laughs> oh, and uh, Kathy Craig called. She said she'd finish the background interviews on her article and she'd be sending us a first draft by next week. She's having some trouble with the uh, title and she asked for some suggestions, so I threw out a few. And the one we liked the best was simply the American novel, colon, alive and living all over the place. We thought um, it could follow the article on overeating, the one called The American Colon, Alive But Just Barely. Those were the jokes, Paul. Uh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I, I thought maybe I could cheer you up, at least distract you for a few minutes. Is there anything I can do? Well, if you can help me forget what's on my mind, just block things out. Some people can do that. They're the lucky ones. Have you really tried, Paul? Oh, that's a foolish question, of course you have. So, what other choice do you have? You can't carry this around with you forever. Yeah. 
feel like I need a bath. Kathy, I just realized what time it is. Where's Karen? Oh, Larry, I really don't know. Oh, I thought she was supposed to be in... Yeah, she was supposed to be here from 9 to 1. I thought so. Is that what you were so worried about when I came in? Oh, well, did I seem worried? Yeah, kind of. Oh, well, no, no, I was just uh, thinking about something that happened at your favorite River Street dive last night. Oh, what was that? Oh, it was just an incident, but it started me thinking, and I... Well, I realized suddenly that uh, very respectable people do go to places like that, don't they? Yeah, sure. I wonder why? I don't know, maybe they're out for kicks, or maybe because they figure they won't run into anybody they know. Is that what happened? You ran into somebody you know there? Oh, no, no. As a matter of fact, I, I was there only a short time, and then the man I was interviewing showed up, and I suggested we go someplace quieter. I was really only here for a few minutes. You gotta call Karen. <laughs> Not gotta know. If she's supposed to be here, she should do it without my reminding her, right? Right, yeah. Can you manage without her? Yeah, I'm expecting uh, Pat Chapman at 10 and Janet Klein at 11. I have figured she wouldn't show up. Larry. Listen, I, I honestly think that Karen meant to show up. Yeah, I know, I know. She honestly means to do a lot of things, but when it comes down to doing them... And would you uh, draft a letter thanking him uh, in a nice way, of course, um, and tell him uh, that we uh, do not publish press agent handouts in our magazine? Uh, a second thought, skip the nice way and just tell him straight out. Let's see. What else? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, a memo to the production department and a copy to Mrs. Lord. I'm aware of the recent increase in the price of high-gloss paper stock, comma, but this is an area where we can't afford to pinch pennies. Uh, dash, dash, not if we are going to maintain the high level of uh, layout and artwork, which we originally agreed upon, period. Uh, paragraph, however... Um, I wish to be uh, kept informed of the situation so that I can make the necessary uh, budget adjustments. A uh, period. Right. Come in. Paul, have you got a minute? Yeah, sure, Joe. Come on in. You look as if you're up to your proverbial neck in work. Well, I haven't exactly been operating at my peak efficiency the last couple of days. Oh, I can certainly understand that. However, it is better to keep working, right? Well, if you mean compared to sitting around a hotel room, staring at the walls, you better believe it. I wish Pat felt that way. She still hasn't decided when she's coming back to work? No, I tried to pin her down last night and again this morning. That's why, that's why I'm here. Well, she's decided to go back home and pack up Brian's things. Joe, I hope you tried to talk her out of it. Tried, but the way Vicky will be with her, we didn't think she ought to be alone at this time. I wish there was something I could do. Are you uh, so snowed in with work that uh, you couldn't spend some of the day with Pat? No, that's, that's not it. I just don't think that Pat wants me around. What makes you think that? Well, uh, Joe, you know, I have a feeling that as far as she's concerned, I'm the guilty party. And if I hadn't been so stubborn in, in trying to get her back, none of this would have happened. Did she tell you that? She doesn't have to. Just think. I just know what she's thinking, that's all. Besides, if there's somebody she wants to be around, I, I, I think it would be Tony. Tony, you're wrong. Why? She and Tony haven't been in touch. And uh, you're wrong about another thing. She doesn't blame you. She blames yourself. Joe, that's ridiculous. Try and tell her that. I mean it. You might succeed where others have been. She at your, your place now? Yeah. Okay. I'll go over there and uh, see if she'll let me go to the house with her. Come in. Oh, Mr. Riley, you're not going. Find Edwin? Oh, you're not leaving me. Call uh, Dorian and tell her I can't make lunch. Yeah. Mr. Riley, 
don't be better for me. Uh, oh, what are these? Well, they're, uh, they're, um, GYN, uh, reminders, you know, like for pap tests, that sort of thing. We try and get all our women patients to get in the habit of coming in every six months. Oh, gotcha. Uh, okay, can I borrow your pants? Thanks. Um, you know, I'm afraid I'm, uh, a little bit like you, particularly if I've been out very late the night before, uh, I have a terrible time dragging myself out of bed the next morning. Oh, but you see, I don't really have any excuse. I, I mean, I uh, went, went home and I, I had dinner, and I took a hot bath, and I did my nails, and uh, then I, I just curled up and I was going to watch some TV, and uh, then the next thing I knew, I was, it was morning, and uh, TV was still on, and there I was in my robe. I slept in my robe. How do you like that? You must have been very tired. Yes, I, I am. I'm, I'm exhausted. I guess I didn't know how much of a strain the last few weeks has been. I didn't realize it. Well, I can understand that. You should really try and get out more. You think so? Yes, you don't want to pet yourself up in town all day. No, that's very understanding of you, Kathy. Well, I've been through it, remember? No, I've forgotten. Kathy, I want to apologize to you for yesterday. It was... It was cruel and uncalled for, and, well, I, I guess I was just a little upset. Sorry. It's all right, I understand. Uh, I've got to do some copying of the schedule for tomorrow. Will you answer the phone for me, sir? Thank you. Mm -hmm. The court is going to give you some relief.
just be fun. If the four of us went out someplace for dinner sometime, maybe to that new disco across the river. Four of us? You and Marco. Richard and me. I don't think that would be such a good idea, Edwina. Why not? Richard don't cotton the Marco. Any particular reason? They just don't get along. Oh, what am I saying? They don't get along at all. As a matter of fact, Richard threatened to punch out Marco if he wasn't nice to him. Why would he say something like that? I don't know. You know, Richard's kind of intense sometimes. But the take on the job of being your personal protector is quite a task.
work. Do you realize that uh, Becky and I are now big buddies? Yeah, she told me how you were just really a country boy at heart. Yes, folks. You see, she only trusts her own kind, so I kind of had to do a little role playing. By the way, I need a little bit more expense money. How much? Oh, I'd say about 50 bucks ought to do it. I got a big phone bill. Yeah, for course, to where? Point south of the old Mason Dixon line. Yeah, where? Well, you know, I followed up on your lead and I looked at the banner, uh, at the banner forms for her employment, you know, and I found out that she listed a gym boss on desert next to Kim down in Fletcher, North Carolina. Yeah, what about? There is no Jim Bob Hunt in Fletcher, North Carolina. Also, no James Robert, no James R, no J. Robert or J.R. Hunt. Furthermore, nobody down there has ever heard of a Rebecca Lee Hunt. You mean she lied about where she came from? I say so, and why? That I haven't figured out yet. Yeah, but what do you think? Well, I'd say either she has something awfully wrong in her past that she doesn't want anybody to know about, or there's no such person as Rebecca Lee Hunt. You'll keep thinking. As long as the certain money holds out, ma'am. I'll give you a holler when I hear anything else. But don't hold your breath. Because that just may take a walk. What? I'm 
trying to put the make on her. You might as well know sooner or later I'm an incurable but lovable flirt. You don't have to tell me that, Marco. You started flirting with me five minutes after we met. Did I wait that long? <laughs> no, but really, there's two kinds of flirting. There's serious flirting and there's fun flirting. Now, Edwina, she's definitely strictly for fun. If she were to respond, I'd be running right outside this office door. Marco, I think you're doing it again. What, trying to lie to you? Oh, come on, Becky. Just because Richard Abbott thinks she's something to drool over doesn't mean I do. She's not my type. Besides, I wouldn't try to lie to you. I know you'd see right through me. Oh, come on, you don't believe that either? Let's just say, I don't jerk on no line until the barber's gone clean under. And I don't think I got a fish unless I see it ain't some kind of old stump or something. What's wrong? You know, you worry me. How come? The way you distrust people. I think it's sad, really. It must take a lot of joy and intimacy out of your life. Look, Marco, I don't need no kind of lecture. I've had enough of those. Well, don't try to make me into something I'm not. I'm just concerned, that's all. Well, I don't need your concern. I don't need nobody's concern. Then why are you so upset? Because you... Never mind. Well, you're too much, you know that? First you distrust someone, then you get angry when they show some concern for you. What was done to you to make you think this way? What caused that deep scar? Here you are, Marco. I'll be working out of Paul's office the rest of the day, so if Dory wants to get a hold of me, she can get me here. Well, I gotta get back to work. Bye, y'all. Yeah, see you later, Beck. I think maybe you ought to learn the art of listening through the keyholes before you come barging in the room. Why, did I interrupt something important? Maybe. Oh, what am I trying to kid? She wouldn't have answered me. She'd have let that slip by just like she lets everything else slip by. She's tough. And bright, too. Mm. Sometimes I think she's brighter than both of us put together. Well, then she must be a genius in bumpkin's clothing because I happen to have a very high IQ. Who did so? I think that we, or at least I, should be able to outwit Miss Rebecca Lee Hunt. Uh-huh. Can we say you and I get together tonight, oh, long about 10 o'clock over a bottle of wine, and I inspect all your IQ points? Marco, I'm beginning to understand why Dorian gets annoyed at your attitude. Oh, but there are other qualities about me that she simply adores. Yes, but then she's easier to please than I am. Well, I'll be off. We might as well not take that. It's just filled with empty paper. Now, if I were to leave here without this thing and Becky saw me, she would know I wasn't up here to get a report. Right. Hey, see, I got a couple IQ points myself, buddy. And it is going to take the both of us to outsmart the bunk. Because it scares the hell out of you that she just might not need you to run her life. 
come on, that's nonsense. Well, the last thing that I need or want is her dependence. Peter, if... Peter, you don't understand because you don't know my sister. Now, all her life, she got her self-confidence from me. I was the person who could get her to start projects with a lot of enthusiasm. And then if the slightest obstacle happened or, or the slightest hint that she couldn't get what she wanted right away, she'd withdraw into herself. She'd quit. But I'd be the one who could open her up again, get her to start all over again. But that was a very long time ago, wasn't it, darling? Hello, Dr. Jansen here. Yeah, all right, just hang on. I'll be right there, all right? Just hang on. Excuse me, but I have to go to a ward. Oh, yes, of course. Peter, we'll have time to talk more about this tonight over dinner, won't we? Uh, I'm afraid not, Dorian. I have plans for the evening. Surely you could change them. No. No, I can't. Excuse me. Yourself 
back. But he wrote them to me. I've, I've got to read them. He didn't show them to you himself, did he? Well, maybe he just forgot about it, or maybe since I was back, he didn't feel he had to had the need to do it because I was there to talk to him. But uh, now that he's dead, it, it's the best way I have to get to know him better. You're only making things worse for yourself. So what? I deserve it, don't I? All of it. Ricky, I should never have come back. I should never have left him. In either case, he'd be alive now. Vicky, he believed in me as a man. And he believed I was alive when nobody else did. It's ironic, isn't it? If I had died in that fire, my son would be alive today. Almost. Well, how could I 
Please get some cardboard boxes. You know something? This reminds me of the time that Brian and I first came to land me. The suitcase was so heavy. He insisted on carrying it himself. I mean, I couldn't hardly pick it up and pick it up and put it down and drag it and push it and pull it. Well, you know, he, he never accepted the story of my death. 